I slip my headphones on, it's like I'm back home again Learn to view the world through the sound of my Walkman on hallway walks When everyone talked again, just enough time to get another song in it Brought me back to a place where I was comfortable Listening to lyrics didn't look as if I needed help Isolated in my drum fills and music notes Filling up my heart with all the sounds allowing me to cope And I was stoked, following their footsteps Musicians have a son, it's always dope if he can do it next So there I was, always buried in my earbuds Labeled at shine, never finding who I really was Eight years old, started learning how to buzz Put that trumpet to my mouth, I couldn't put it down Because whether I was forced or not, my image, I adopted it And once you think it's true it's really hard to want to stop it Now I can't be a hypocrite You made your bet now letting it And it took me 20 years to feel as if I had a say in it I felt that weight on my shoulders lift Overcame a fear and let my life stop the shift Like the journey's never finished We always have an image It governs how we act and can make us feel different It's all about your mission Aligning up with the vision Understanding what you're given And searching for inner wisdom We always have an image We always have an image It governs how we act and can make us feel different It's all about your mission Aligning up with the vision Understanding what you're given And searching for inner wisdom Yeah Look now see I came full circle, one year without music, making academic hurdles, no emotional movement, my improvement was minimal, started to feel cynical, until I started using beats to make my feelings literal, and the insight of artists who were trying their hardest, helped me harness a skill set to target my weaknesses, fact is, music is a way for me to check in, reckon, if I just start to sit with all my stresses, I can focus on that second and begin to feel connected, fill up another moleskin to add to my collection. And it's infectious, his obsession with expression taught me lessons Overwhelming how compelling dedication is Committed to a life of love, starting with myself Lyricism is a gift to help me figure it out And no doubt I'll face pain, feel I want to change lanes But the key to this game is getting soaked when it rains Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you my name is Ian Levy. I'm a hip-hop artist, counselor, and educator. And I use hip-hop to promote a deeper understanding of the things that we feel and to provide us with the skill set necessary to navigate difficult situations. During a difficult period of time in my life, I read a book by a Buddhist poet and teacher named Matsu Basho. Basho traveled the northeastern provinces of Japan in search for inspiration for his work. And being that he was Buddhist, throughout these travels, he adhered to the principles of mindfulness, meaning he did whatever he could to center himself in the present moment, focus on his surroundings, and capture the essence of the journey as a whole. But being that he was an emotionally torn individual who came from a rough past, often he experienced such intense emotion that it stripped him from the ability to be present. And in these moments, he would turn to haiku, which is a form of poetry, to cleanse himself of his emotions in that moment and focus in on the following moment with a clear mindset. And given that I was in a very difficult time when I read this book, this was so eye-opening for me that I started to do my own writing using an untraditional, unconventional form of writing called hip-hop for my own self-exploration and emotional development. And the more I wrote, the more I recorded the more I shared it with others. And as I began to share this music that was based on experiences I had gone through with my friends, they validated my work. And the support I got from them not only validated the medium that I was using to express these feelings, but the feelings themselves. And so it was at this point in my life I had such a profound understanding of my own feelings and I felt so much better than I had ever felt that I decided that I wanted to do whatever I could to provide this same platform to young people who needed the tools for emotional stability. So when I got to Teachers College, I was fortunate enough to run into a bunch of amazing educators who nurtured me and pushed me towards this goal, and I wound up writing and publishing a piece called Hip Hop and Spoken Word Therapy with Urban Youth. And now I go into schools in New York City and I provide young people with a culturally relevant platform to channel their interpersonal experiences. And I know and I believe that if we are unable to focus on ourselves and figure out what we need to do, it is because 
we lack the ability to digest our difficult emotional experiences. And so when you see a young person react physically in a given situation or are overly harsh on themselves, it is most likely because they lack the tools to sort through these intense emotions. And so the less we are able to accurately label the things that we feel, the less we are able to come to logical conclusions about those feelings and then push forward in a way that is healthy for us. So, how do we get young people to talk about their feelings? I have two ideas. The first is that it is necessary to understand that when we speak about our emotions, it makes us feel weak and it makes us feel vulnerable. And we have been conditioned by society in a bunch of ways that I won't go into now that prevent us from expressing those feelings because we do not want to feel weak or vulnerable. But hip hop, because of the fact that it is a socially acceptable platform, creates a willingness to explore our emotions. That is to say, the more vividly that we can speak to our emotional experiences, and the better we are at critically analyzing the things that we've been through, the better hip hop we are able to create. So that brings me to the second point. As an MC and a counselor in the classroom with young people, I put myself in a position to facilitate difficult discussions around intense experiences that we have had for the sole purpose of converting those experiences into songs. And I know from personal experience that it is quite easy to adopt perceptions of ourself that are based on who we think we're supposed to be rather than who we are if we lack the tools for emotional stability. So when I'm working with young people, my job now becomes to ensure that the lyrics they produce accurately speak to their emotional experiences. And when I find that there is a cognitive distortion in the writing of the young people, it becomes my responsibility to highlight that and to help them reframe that. For example, recently I had a student come to me for an individual counseling session. For all intents and purposes, let's name him Adam. And Adam came to me and said, hey, I want to write a hip-hop song with you. So, of course, I was stoked. So I took out my computer, and I got a beat going, and I told him that great hip-hop reflects who we are and how we feel. And I encouraged him to focus on any recent experiences he had had and to use that as a platform to create this song. And Adam told me the following story. Recently, he applied to give a solo in the church choir. And upon receiving word that he was going to get to sing this solo, he was super excited and felt incredibly courageous because this was not a move that he would normally make. So he went home and he told his family, hey, I'm going to go up and sing this solo. Please come support me. They said they would come. He went back to the church. He told the church community that his friends and family were going to come. And we got up on the stage on the day of the service, and he was singing his solo. He looked out into the crowd, and none of his family and friends were there. And he expressed to me that in that moment, he felt ashamed and felt guilty because he had promised the church community that people were going to come support him, and then they did not show up. And I would label that as a not fully accurate way of viewing that situation. Because from the story he had told me, all these people had promised him that they would come and then they didn't show up. So I encouraged him to focus in on that moment when he was standing out on the stage looking out into the crowd and to think about the emotions he felt down in that moment and write them down. And then we would work together to create lyrics around them. I don't have a clicker for this screen. So if I can have that, that would be awesome. Um, so in this moment, I informed him to focus in on his feelings. And this is what we came up with together when we crafted these rhymes. Why friends let me down and hold me back? Make me feel betrayed and sometimes off track. My word is my word and that's a fact, so when I'm in a struggle, I put my words on a track. When it was showtime, there wasn't fam or a friend. I called them up and they pretend to attend. And now they're trying to bounce like a ball on the rim. I can't trust them if they say it again. So what these lyrics reflect is an understanding of his feelings at a deeper level. And because of the fact that Adam came to me asking to write a song, we were able to have a detailed discussion surrounding the feelings that he felt in a given moment that was obviously difficult. 
Can you run that slide back one more time, please? Thank you. So in these moments where we talk about, where we want to talk about our feelings, we need to be able to have the tools for emotional stability in order to accurately label our feelings. And so in order for young people to navigate the situations that they inevitably will face that are difficult, they need to have the tools for emotional stability. So when I put myself in the classroom with young people, my goal is to ensure that the lyrics they create again reflect who they are and how they feel. And when I'm asking them to confront difficult situations, I have to be willing to confront my own emotions as well. And I have to ensure that the practices that I am using are culturally relevant. So it's like this. Christmas tree ornaments in the corner with my cornet, the courage at the core. Me was hidden in a fortress, living, ignoring weakness, barricading my soul with dyslexia. And doctors started studying my eyelids, focusing on quotes, quotes, courts, or sports. With less time for manuscripts and guilt reinforced. So school became a nuisance and they put me on 504, the specialized classroom with gum on the floor. I'm numb, bored, and worn. It still hasn't poured. Won't grow past five feet. The doctors were sure. And mom stabbed me in the leg once a month for a year. And I'm sore, crying tears, hide it from my ears, self-administering shots, locked behind the bathroom door, friends are in the living room, sleep over chores, and I knew I couldn't let them know to save popularity, they'd sneer, they'd snicker, see, laugh, or check about me, toss notes in class that read, I'ma beat you up, I'll back beat, I'm a beast with a fear of being free-headed towards catastrophe, I'm on a leash, no freedom of speech with the need to unleash a masterpiece, I'm not fine, but of course I have to say I am morphed and more to a place where I can hold my trumpet in my hand and claim I understand, I gotta follow my fam in college, I am a musical man, the quick I ran the further I am, damn. You see, I want to help the world, and hip hop's my passion. I see no other path than rapping. I said, I want to help the world, and hip hop's my passion. I see no other path than rapping. That's right, I want to help the world, and hip hop's my passion. I see no other path than rapping. That's right, I want to help the world, and hip hop's my passion. I see no other path than rapping. Thank you.